Hello, my name is Marie-Christine Supansis and I'm the BCMG's flute player. Today I'm practicing Cassandra's Dream Song by Brian Fernyho. Uh, the piece has two sheets of music and on the first sheet of music we have sections, numbered sections from one to six and on the second page we have sections A to E. And uh, the way it's supposed to work from the performing instructions is that um, you play the section of the first sheet um, in numerical order and in between the numbers you pick one of the sections on the other side. So every performance is actually supposed to be spontaneous, you're not supposed to be planning anything in advance and I think that's a great opportunity to really use the acoustic of the room where you're performing and uh, make this really your own performance. Um, this piece is also unlike anything I've ever played in my 12 years with BCMG. It is incredibly complex. Um, a lot of the time you have many instructions for each note. Um, if I'm looking at uh, one bit here uh, in section B, for example, um, you um, go from an extreme quadruple piano to fortissimo and back. Um, at the same time you're trilling, but the trill also changes in pitch, so you're starting lower and then getting higher. Um, also, the speed of the troll gets faster, um, so it's, it's a bit of a challenge for the musician to actually remember all of the instructions uh, at the same time. So in this section, for example, it sounds something like this. Um, another example uh, would be just above that. We've got a G natural, um, which is marked flutter tongue. Um, a normal flutter tongue would just sound like this. Uh, at the same time, um, you're supposed to have a vibrato there as well, fast heavy vibrato, which on its own sounds like this. At the same time also, you're supposed to do a smozzato, which um, you don't find very often actually for the flute in contemporary music. And the way he describes it uh, to be performed is that you keep closing your lips a little bit to have a similar effect to vibrato, but it sounds a little different. So then um, I'm supposed to be doing all three things at the same time, which I'm going to attempt now. which actually makes it <laughs> quite hard, but I think it's a very interesting color. Uh, at the same time, also, I'm then supposed to be doing a glissando with my lips. Um, so I'm going to attempt that also. So I think this is a very, very interesting effect. And um, all of the things, although it's incredibly complex actually in this piece, all of the effects really make, make a difference. Um, there's some really cool things like, for example, um, we've got some overtones here. So it's a top G, but with different fingerings, overblown harmonics, and he wants them to change all the time. So it sounds like this. which I think is also really quite cool. Um, and then maybe going back to the first page, we've got some very interesting instructions as well. Um, like for example, the very first line, actually it looks easier than some of the other sections, but I find it personally actually quite a lot harder because it's nearly all the same notes, but every note is played slightly differently. So we've got key clicks, for example, like this. And then you have um, pizzicato noises like that which has a subtle difference. Um, but then also you're supposed to be key, doing key clicks with different keys. So I'm gonna just play you the first few notes of this. So I think this is really cool because you have just all sorts of different effects. So he really creates his completely own sound world in this. So there's one other really cool thing where you use the flute as a very percussive instrument um, where um, it sounds like this. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you. 